Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to the Piper project. In uh, today's video, I'm gonna give you an update on the status of my F-16 uh, simulator cockpit build. It's been a few months since uh, the last update and uh, as you can see, quite a lot has changed. So I'll uh, walk you through all the updates as well as uh, what I'm currently working on at the moment. And at the end of the video, I'll answer some of the most uh, frequently asked questions that you guys have asked me throughout the comments or via email. Before we get started guys, I'd like to thank each and uh, every one of you which has uh, subscribed to the channel, uh, left a nice comment and uh, reached out to me in the last few months. I appreciate uh, all of that guys, so keep it coming and I'll try to answer all of the questions that uh, you guys uh, asked me in the comment section. So, without uh, further ado, let's uh, get started on uh, the video. So. The biggest change since uh, the last uh, update is uh, the seat. You could have seen in uh, the previous video that the seat was still uh, unpainted and under construction. I posted a guide on the step-by-step -step on how I made this so you can uh, check it out if you like. And uh, now this is the finished uh, product. Most of the 3D printed parts have been added to the seat. So starting from the left hand side, all the plumbing, the oxygen bottle, all the brackets, various levers, ejection handle, the stickers, and the main parachute container with the fabric. These uh, fabrics are actually 3D printed. These files were made by, once again, Alert 5 Design Studios and the work that they've made to replicate the fabric size and the parachute at the top. It's, it's just amazing. You can see the details are super nice and sharp. And this guy is, by the way, resin printed and it's just uh, painted uh, to make it look real, but it's actually 3D printed, which is just crazy to think. And uh, the results uh, are uh, really, really nice. I really like the way it turned out. It's, it gives it a, a very nice realistic look. All the pitot tube uh, mechanism also is uh, 3D printed in resin. It is non-functional, of course. The spring as well as are 3D printed, but they do move. If I remove a few parts, you can actually extend the pitot tubes uh, just for fun, basically. But, uh, but of course, I'll, I'll leave it in this uh, configuration. You can see as well the flight data recorder box uh, here with uh, a few more uh, stickers and uh, metal plates, which I've uh, printed myself. Moving on. To uh, the other side, you can see more of the brackets and the various uh, plumbing, as well as uh, the emergency handle over there, and, and that's pretty much it. Other parts which are missing, of course, are the uh, cushions, which I will be purchasing from uh, Invictus Cockpit. They do offer them. A few more parts of the seat which I'm uh, currently working on are over here on my workbench and these are all the details that have been released in the latest update of the seat plans which you can uh, already find yourself if you if you own them and there are all the details and accessories which they go at the back of the seat so i'm just missing the uh, rocket tube and then i still need to paint uh, the the front cover and then once all of the parts are done, I'm gonna have to remove the seat from the pit and then install all of those parts and then the seat will be hopefully 100% complete for good. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is an uh, online uh, manufacturing uh, service that you can use to build uh, pretty much whatever you want. They do uh, PCB prototyping, but as well CNC work, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and much more to help realize whatever project you may have. So be sure to check them out. I'll leave a link in the video description as well as here on the screen. So other updates from the right hand side. As you can see, the panels haven't changed much, but I did print a map box here which uh, I'll give you more info on where to find this in, uh, in just a moment. And this is also functional. You can use it to store whatever you want, basically, but uh, that's another nice 3D printed part since uh, the last update. Moving on, the side stick has been installed in the pit. It wasn't there before, and uh, now it's finally in. 
So the stick itself is a Trustmaster Water Stick, which I've modified to make it look like a Netflix in stick. I've engraved the text on the front plate to make it look a little bit more realistic. And I've changed also the DMS switch. This is a 3D printed uh, cap that I used to replace the original Trustmaster switch, which replicates an earlier version of the Viper slash A10. And uh, this is a little bit more correct, if you will, for the block 50 slash 52 that I'm trying to replicate. The seat, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, stick has an adapter at its base. This is also made by Invictus Cockpit and this tilts the stick forward a little bit to give it the correct angle. And the stick base is a force transducer made by once again Invictus Cockpit and this is their BFT 3.0 and this thing is just great. I've used it on my computer for a while and uh, it just gives a super realistic feel for flying the Viper using once again a force transducer so the stick itself doesn't move almost by nothing as you can see this is the maximum amount of uh, movement the stick has like just like the real one and uh, this thing is great I really like it so I can't wait to actually start using this in the pit itself once I wire all of the sim up with a screen and, and so on another few updates on the Ryzen console I started to make a few of these uh, dials they are using the same concept as the engine dials which I will uh, talk about in just a minute cabin pressure altitude the EPU fuel liquid oxygen actually this one doesn't is not really correct for the version of the Viper that I'm trying to replicate but I actually made a mistake when cutting the auxiliary console here I didn't notice that there was an extra hole for this instrument so instead of uh, covering it up I thought I'd just put a, a fake instrument which which doesn't work hydraulic uh, indicators this will be the fuel indicator and finally here the engine cluster is also an addition since uh, the last video so these engine instruments are made using the guide and the files provided by Moon from uh, Viper Pits so if you want to make a engine instrument cluster yourself you can uh, go ahead and download this design on uh, Viper Pits and uh, of course all of this is for free so once again thanks Moon for providing the files Another update, fuel flow indicator there. This uh, I've made myself. It's just a 3D printed bezel to cover up a small LCD screen, which is run by an Arduino Nano. And I've written a code to basically make the fuel flow indicator replicate the one uh, in, uh, in the game, in DCS. Another update is the DD. So this DD, is a 3D printed box. Once again, I'll uh, link in the description where you can find it. And it's a 3D printed box which uh, is meant to house the internal components of a SIM gear DED, which is what you see here. So I had a SIM, a SIM gear DED before, so I just 3D printed the box and switched over the internals. So it looks uh, it looks more realistic like that. Another part which has been added since the last update are the glare shields. So the right and left half glare shields are done. And there are different files from uh, what I had before. Uh, the ones I had before were from Colts 3D and uh, they worked just fine. But they didn't have the mounting holes for all the accessories and they didn't have the uh, correct thickness for for the glare shield itself so these one are made by once again alert 5 design studios and they will be included if you own the plans to make basically this whole uh, cockpit so uh, they should be released also quite soon so moving on to the, the left hand side uh, a few more panels have been uh, built on this uh, console as you can see some of them are not quite 100% done but I'm getting there it's quite a lot of work but uh, I'm working through all of them 
latest panel that I've made is the miscellaneous panel over here. I know the alternate release uh, button should be red, but I didn't have any red ones, so they're on the way. So for the moment, I just put a white one in. And also the ECM lamp and the uh, indicator light here are not finished quite yet. They're just, uh, just in there, just as a placeholder, basically. Another addition is the glare shield here, center glare shield, which once again is a file made by Alert 5 Design Studios. This is a 3D printed part. Uh, if you wonder what uh, this is uh, in the middle, this is a bracket to mount a CPT in the front. So I will not be building the standard uh, instrument dials in the center pedestal, but instead I will be using a CPD to have a, a digital screen with, the, with all the digital instruments uh, in, the, in the center pedestal. Basically. Another part that uh, I'm working on at the moment is uh, this one right here. And this is the right sidewall. This is a huge 3D printed part, which will be released once again soon. I'm sending it at the moment, that's why it looks uh, it looks rough, but uh, that's one of the latest addition as well on the pit. And there's another one on the left hand side, which isn't quite complete yet, so I'm printing it in sections. So as I'm printing it, I will be putting it together and then send it and then uh, paint it to make it look a little bit nice. Oh yeah, another addition is the throttle rail. It wasn't there before. We would have seen just the throttle quadrant system before, but now the rail is in. This is once again uh, made by Invictus Cockpit. And the only modification I have to make is to add a little bit of a spacer. I'm not sure if you can see it there. Uh, in between the rail and uh, the frame itself, because otherwise the tooth of the throttle would not engage uh, with the rail itself. But like that, it works, uh, it works just fine. And uh, I've also added a front mounting point for the screw there. That's it. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So that's the, the latest update on uh, my F16 uh, simulator. A few more parts that I'm uh, working on at the moment. So these are my uh, eyebrow indicator lights. I'm remaking them. You would have seen an earlier video where I show how I made this. However, those were not in the right scale. So I've reprinted them in the correct scale. And this is just a raw resin print, which I will then finish and then, um, and then install in the, in the pit. So that's uh, pretty much it as far as uh, update goes. So what I'm uh, gonna do next, I'll continue to uh, finish to design and print and build the avionic panels here. Uh, there are still a few more missing, which are the more complex ones, if you will. Of course, uh, these design will be available to download for free, as previously mentioned, on a Viper Pits, if you want to build them yourself. Now, to answer some of the frequently asked questions, that you guys have asked me in uh, the comment section. So a lot of you have asked me, uh, first of all, where to find the plans to make a Viper simulator yourself. So uh, if you want to buy the exact same files that I've used to build this, go ahead and visit invictuscockpit.com and you can uh, purchase a copy of these plans uh, for yourself uh, right now. The good news is that a version 2 of their cockpit plans is just about to be released and version 2 will come with a number of announcements over version 1 which is the one that you see uh, right here. Many many differences but one of the main ones being how they make the instrument consoles. So they have a, a custom system which is 3D printed to mount the instrument panels in a different configuration from the one that you see here. So you can uh, switch panels around uh, in a different configuration without having to drill a, a new hole in your, uh, in your console, which is, uh, which is great. Another update that uh, will come with V2 is all the 3D printed files for the glitter shields will be included. 
uh, the center one, the various levers, as well as the map box and, uh, and many more. So go check them out uh, if you want. Another question that I've uh, been asked uh, quite a lot is uh, where do I find the plans to make an ACES2 ejection seat? And uh, once again, the answer is uh, the same. Go to invictuscockpit.com and you can get a copy for uh, yourself. The recent update has uh, just been uh, dropped for the files, which includes all the uh, 3D printed parts that I've shown in the video. The designer of the seat and the pit is Alert 5 Design Studios, and they make uh, great work replicating, uh, again, the ASS2 seat and an F16 uh, pit. I'd say the best design that you can find out there if you want to make a, a replica for uh, yourself. So. Another update that I've been uh, asked uh, quite a lot are regarding my uh, flight controls. So, as I mentioned before, the, the stick is a Thrustmaster Word of Stick. The base is a BFT 3.0 from Invictus Cockpit. The uh, TQS, the handle, is a Thrustmaster Cougar handle, which I've uh, wired up to use it as a standalone and I've got a, a little adapter. I said I was gonna make a video, I haven't had the chance to make it just yet, but I did make a guide on how to wire up an adapter yourself if you want, and that guide is available on uh, Viperpit, so I'll, uh, I'll leave a link uh, down below if you want to check it out and uh, build an adapter yourself. Another question that I've been asked is which tools do I use to make such a project like that, and I've used many, many tools, but just to keep it basic, the, the pit itself is uh, made out of plywood. This has been CNC cut by a local shop and then I've just put it together. The other main tools that I'm, use, that I'm using to 3D print all the parts are my resin printer. This is an Elegoo Saturn 12K, Saturn 3 12K. And my FDM printer is a Chidi X Max 3. Uh, FDM printer, which I mainly use uh, to print with uh, ABS. Another question is uh, how do I manage the avionics on the side console? So I can show you the right hand console. So just uh, give me a second. So these side panels, they are removable. Uh, so you can get access to the avionic base. You can see here one of the box, which houses an Arduino Mega. And then it has all the connection for all the cables which they run to each of the panels and they carry over the signal which uh, then is being uh, sent to DCS via a single USB port here at the front. The left hand console will have exactly the same setup. Another common question is uh, how will I do the uh, visual setup for the sim and uh, the answer is I don't know just yet how I'm going to do it. Initially, I had in mind a 180 degrees curved screen and a projector, but I've since abandoned that idea and I'm leaning towards an augmented reality setup. So I can use the VR headset to basically have a pass through to see my real cockpit, but then when I look outside, I can see the virtual wall. So that's probably what I will do. In, uh, in the future. So I think I'm gonna uh, wrap up the video right here. So once again, uh, thank you very much uh, everybody for uh, supporting me and following me throughout uh, this uh, project. You can also follow me over on Instagram. I'll put the uh, link into the uh, description where I uh, usually post a little bit more regular updates, but I'll, uh, I'll try as well to make more videos to show you guys the progress on uh, the project. So uh, once again, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.